what what we have in Sabine's chart is is, is quite um, noteworthy in that she has her moon on her ascendant, almost exact. So whenever any planet is angular, by which I mean conjunct the ascendant or the descendant, the midheaven or the nadir, that would be angular, then that planet is emphasized very strongly. And we typically we've all got angular planets. So that emphasizes the planet. So in this case, Sabine's moon is emphasized and she has conjunct her moon mm -hmm. Uranus. So whenever an outer planet, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto is conjunct either the sun or the moon, which are called one of the lights, then that's really noteworthy. That would be called her Dharma aspect in a certain study. In other words, really, really central to what she's about. So we know that sort of the, the, the moon is more feminine and responsive. We know that Libra is more to do with trying to find a perfection of balance. So we're here we have a moon, the, the responsive element, trying to perfect balance. So she's going to be able to reflect whatever energy is coming at her by almost being contrary and, and trying to bring it to balance by being a little bit um, offering the, 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 the missing part of a energetic expression. And with Uranus conjunct the moon, then that's going to be very fast, very intuitive and rather unusual at times. The moon Uranus conjunction makes for a certain um, weirdness in the nicest possible way. There's a kind of a, a mysterious magical quality sometimes. So this is on her ascendant. She's not going to be able to hide this. This is out there for everyone to see. So my guess is that some of your, your friends think you're a bit strange. <laughs> is that true? Uh, when Maybe not that much because I think my friends are strange too. So I choose strange people as friends. <laughs> so you're only you're only mixing with strange people, are you? Yes. <laughs> well, that'll do. <laughs> I'm happy with that. So um, here we are. <laughs> it's strange in a good way, you know. The the good the good strange. I consider it one of the best words in the language. Strange is good, absolutely. Special, I could have said. So. When we're looking at one of the planets, Uranus in this case, at the first degree of Sabian Libra, we have to remember that the moon is influencing it as well as Uranus itself. That's the point of what I'm saying. We're not only looking at Uranus here, we're looking at a, a moon-Uranus conjunction that will have resonance with this degree. And in fact, the other way around, when we come to look at the sixth degree of Libra, it will be a, a Uranus-like moon that we're looking at. Okay, so we begin the second half of the Zodiac with the first degree of Libra. This is the return home. And D Dane Rudyard makes a big deal of this. He, he writes a huge amount about the first degree of Aries and an equally large amount about the first degree of Libra. He reckons it's a really big deal to be turning around. Well, um, we're talking about the autumn equinox. This is the moment when darkness overtakes the light we're well on our way now into the winter half of the year with this you know we were turning it's already started to get autumnal and we're you know we're kind of close to that point a little while ago and, and it's in the air now we feel something shifted so um the image of the sabian symbol is a butterfly made perfect by a dart through it. So this was an, a hobby that they, they would do a hundred years ago where they would find butterflies and pin them <laughs> to, to show them off. I don't know if it's still done, but that's what they used to do. And the, the idea was that the butterfly is so beautiful, it, it, but it just lasts for a day and then it dies, you know. So they pin its beauty to hold its beauty for an extended period of time. 
And um, the, the principle here is that there is the ideal of beauty that actually is not real. Um, it, beauty is transient. It, it just changes so quickly. It's, it's an illusion as well. And the, the idea of pinning a butterfly is to try and hold beauty, hold the perfection of an ideal, um, which can't really be done. So we, we've got this kind of ambiguity where we're always trying to be perfect mm. and, and, and actually having to accept that, well, we did our best. And then this is central to Libra. Libra is only happy when everything in their environment is perfectly in balance, which it never is. I mean, there's that single moment when it appears that way, just for a split second. And then there's this grace uh, unrivaled in the Zodiac. Um, you know, I, I was remember once I was walking along the street behind somebody I knew who was a Libra woman. And I was just fascinated by the way she was walking because it was just like, it was the picture of grace, you know, it was so beautiful. And um, when I talked to her about it afterwards, she said, yeah, you know, I can only get that like once a month, once in a blue moon, you know, usually I, I kind of, I can't work it out. So that's the, that's the grace and the, the punishment and the um, uh, reward for Libra. They get to, to know perfection, but only for a moment and then it's gone. And you know, kind of, you kind of think, well, I wish I hadn't known it because you know, now I miss it. And, and that's the first degree of Libra, you know, trying to pin beauty because that's what you want when you've tasted it. You, you, that's what you want. So that's your Uranus trying to get things perfectly right and, and getting it right for a split second. And then on we go. You've got to wait for another period before you get it back. Can you resonate with any of that, Sabine? Uh, yes, and definitely. Uh, I'm always. Uh, I do paint and and um, and draw as well, and, and play music, and I and I'm just and I, and I love it when these moments of these moments, these perfect moments. I mean, I, I'm always looking for them, and they did. I think the counterpart of uh, this looking for this perfection is that, well, as you were saying, it it rarely happens. Uh, but so it's like a, it brings a, yes, it does. Yeah, uh, I think it makes um, because you will you you by looking for an ideal that is hard to reach or just doesn't like very long very long. Well, when I do something, if it's not perfect, I'm almost tempted not to do anything because I know, because I'm afraid it's not going to be good enough. Yeah. So it's learning that. <laughs> It's not going to last anyway. Um, I see that butterfly. That That is so, something very ephemeral. And then that air quality of Libra is so mental. I see the, like this, the pen is like the sword of thought, that we pen things in memory that we find perfect. We try to, we try to hold that perfection in the mm. mind as memory. Sabine has this conjunction with Moon and Uranus that this ephemeral nature, like the way that Uranus sort of the things that manifest almost like a lightning bolt, this perception that this percept the moments of perception are instantaneous. You can't you can hold on to them as sort of I mean each for each person it may be different, but just an an image or a feeling that later maybe you translate into a, into your art. And I think just experience teaches us that you can't hold on to anything anyway. Mm -hmm. Just you very, very Iranian. Yes, I think that the, the two points here is that there is the transience of beauty and the poignancy of trying to capture something which is ephemeral on the one hand. And that the other hand, we can actually retain it as mm -hmm. a mental image mm -hmm. and as an ideal to aspire towards. And, and, and that, that seems to be the dual aspects of the interpretation here. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded of that William Blake poem about he who tries to grasp joy, you know, has it flee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has that same energy. <clears throat> exactly so, yeah. And beauty is definitely like that. It's, it's not only ephemeral, but illusory. 
some of the, the things that we find beautiful that are profoundly ugly as soon as you get close to them. <laughs> 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 when you think about the, you know, the, the, the moon on, on, on the lake at midnight, you know, that's great from a distance, <laughs> but you, you get anywhere near the water that you're so admiring and it, you, you drown if you can't swim and it's cold, and it's horrible, you know. <laughs> Libra 2. And um, this is the light of the sixth race transmuted to the seventh. Now, I'm sure some of you must know about Rudolf Steiner and the Theosophists, am I right? They, 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 this must be a reference to that. Uh, um, Annie Bazant and Madame Blavatsky were the only people I know talking about the sixth race and the seventh race. So, um, and, and I think we're talking about 1925 and theosophy was the big deal. Everybody knew about theosophy at that time. So um, we're talking about the transformation of our race. The human species is going through a transformation of its psyche. And then we're moving into a higher level of consciousness as a species. This is the idea. And um, in Jones's text, the image has made reference to the esoteric understandings and numerology that in essence suggests that having mastered six aspects of life, we reach up to the seventh, which is of a higher order. When a seeker moves on to these more subtle realms of consciousness, it is necessary to have a firm grasp on who we are and what we are doing. There are real dangers to guard against them. We need to be totally convinced about exactly where we center ourselves and what precise purposes we have. Remembering that this is in contrast to the previous degree, which was ephemeral. Here we're saying that just won't do when you're going into harm's mm -hmm. way. You know, you, you can't get all fluffy about who you are and what's beautiful and what's right when, when you're in the period of change that's fundamental here you, you actually have to have a grounded sense of self if we're approaching some upset some shift some change times whether it's the big one or just a little one you know we need to know who we are we really do and and that's partly a discovery but it's also partly a choice, a decision, isn't it? It's, it's, it's pretty much um, um, uh, what humanity is going through at the moment, this sort of thing of um, people having to resolve uh, which side of the fence they sit on, where they are, you know, and then, you know, once they've decided that, then there's a whole lot of other layers, internal layers that sort of keep sort of coming to the surface of whether you're really on about it where you're seeing it you know and you know just there's um there's a lot of a lot of layers that most of us have got to go through at the moment you know absolutely yeah Could, can you name a couple of them just by example oh well, no, well firstly you know like telling telling the truth is really good one because lies have become so common you know that it, there's a lot of institutionalized lies around now that people sort of have to tell but it may not be part of their character you know um uh, the, the different types of illusion that we have to sort of shake ourselves out of the inherited points of view that we all carry from our parents and our societies um they're all sort of coming up for review at the moment because we're on a period of hold nobody knows what's going on what the future is likely to be and any one of us is capable of having good ideas or being creative or loving or whatever you know so it's i feel that there's sort of a general view going on so going back to that butterfly idea, that very much came up um, with uh, Zia's brother when he led one of the meditations during the real intense part of the lockdown um, of that butterfly and the chrysalis and the imaginal goo when actually everything becomes very liquefied. Hmm. And... Um, that, that uh, helped me a lot. I had also had that thought lying in my bed during that period that I just felt kind of like goo. And, um, That's an yeah. extraordinary bit of information there. I, I don't know if people understand, but the, a chrysalis, um, as it moves through the changes, um, pretty much loses all of its shape, 
and its, its constituency is is goo. You know, it's, it, 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 it's not something that moves from what it is to a different version of itself, which is ever so different. You know, it's not that kind of transformation. It's almost like putting putting itself in a blender and having <laughs> something else born. It's just really, really big shift. And, and that's what a butterfly represents is absolute transformation on the, the root level. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in some cases, it, 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 it eats itself, no? <clears throat> I believe the chrysalis eats itself. Yeah, to born something else. But it eats itself first. <laughs> oh, uh, that, that, that would be so subtle. That would... I think the equivalent to the qualities that we associate as soul qualities, mm. who we are as soul, it's not to do with body or opinions or belief or anything like that. It's to do with qualities, you know, like truth is one Peter has mentioned and beauty and creativity is one Sabina's brought attention to and so on. So we've got primary qualities that, that we really hold as important on the soul level and I, my, my guess is that that's what we need to cling to and that's that's the reality and nothing else actually matters you know and and that word is is almost literal and nothing perhaps will survive the dematerialization dematerialization process the reconciliation of these two contrasting degrees in the first and the second is in the third, the dawn of a new day, everything changed. The reformulation of eternal energy. A person who has gained awareness of the ideal knows, knows fully and clearly where is their powerful, unassailable center. And it is the inevitable major creative force in their own lives. Just by being who they are, they initiate significant creative changes in their world. A fulfilled and creative life is quite simply a journey from where we are to where we are going without constraints about which route to take or how long we have to make it. We make it all up as we go along. So we've kind of anticipated this already in our conversations and um, what Adia said, you know, they trust the process. That's part of it. What's been said, like, Okay, so I might not get it perfect, but what choice do I have? I, I feel reluctant to have another go, which is going to mm -hmm. miss the point, but I do it anyway. <laughs> you know, um, that spirit of, of, of doing the best you can, knowing that it might miss the mark, but knowing that there's nothing else to do. The only thing that there is to do is for us to be who we are as creatively, joyfully as we can possibly be what else is there to, to do you know should we all worry or be anxious about what might happen that doesn't seem like such a good idea you know our strategy surely is to be who we are joyfully and creatively what whatever comes comes you know and that that seems to make sense doesn't it alvaro how is this striking you you said earlier your series is is at this degree no oh, it, it 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 truly resonates yeah a great deal is Bismillah the beginning of a new day? Exactly. Uh, uh, not exactly. Bismillah means I begin in the name of God. I begin in the name of God. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it's exactly what this this means. It, and like every single moment, like now, is new. Now is new. Every single moment. It's not just a new day. It's every single moment. Every single breath is is the beginning again the reaffirmation that life is is new it's very profound i think beautiful it's lovely that you used the expression um alvaro learning what uh, this moment can teach us yeah. yeah and and that ties it back very nicely to the expression for these five degrees learning okay moving on to libra four a group around the campfire Sometimes inspiration requires a group in spiritual rapport, the inspiration of communion. It is not enough to find personal realization if we want to be an optimal force for the good. We need to spend time in the presence of others who are also on the path and share our inspiration together. 
something larger occurs when we can stimulate the possibility of group consciousness. Jesus's words, when two or more are gathered in my name, I am there, indicates that sharing is required in order to embody Christ consciousness. Spiritual communion within a group of peers. So this fourth position in the expression would suggest <clears throat> the method, the technique, how do we learn? And I think that all of us are deeply aware and committed to the idea that you can learn more when you're in a group of people who are tuning in together. It's what we're doing now. And I'm, I, I'm pretty sure that all of us uh, have found a new dimension of, of appreciation for the work that we're doing on Sabian symbols by doing it together, you know. So it's a very profound mystery, but you know, we, we've got that one. <laughs> we've worked that one out, all of us. I'm really drawn to this one because it is so indicative of storytelling. You know, that humanity came around the fire in that time of food preparation and darkness. Mm -hmm. And that those thoughts, again, that Libra energy of the mind and um, these stories, which gave us our, our traditions of wisdom and how we formed communities around mm -hmm. these shared stories. I really there's, love this one. There's a strange insight into that because once you once you've had your supper and, and and the light is is leaving you, you just sit around the fire. There's nothing else to do. There's no light. So a group of people are silence in silence, often just staring at the flickering light. And even though it's a strange distortion of the principle, it's kind of what happens nowadays, where a group of people, a family, are, are sitting in the dark, staring at this flickering light of a television. You know, it's, um, and being told stories, even though it's kind of technological and therefore lacks grace. Nevertheless, the stories that we get on 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 the movies that we watch are expanding our awareness of what the world's all about. You know, I, I don't know how I would have learned so much about what's going on in the world without watching television, sadly. But I have done a lot of sitting around campfires and, and listening to story time around the campfires. You know, Richard and I did a lot of camps together, unicorn camps in England. And uh, at seven o'clock every night, there was this shout, story time. And yeah. every night it was. And everybody was racing to the yurt. And, you know, all the kids would sit around and that was their exciting moment of the day. And uh, quite, quite a few adults felt the same way, you know. And, you know, the stories were passed on. Well, it's part of also this fragmentation is this lack of, of unified storytelling in a, that forms community. It forms those agreements. Um, sure. You know, it's, it's the flip side of this huge technology of, you know, that's created so much diversity. Yeah, we do share the same stories. I mean, our, our mythology, our um, folklore is, is moved forward into the future on, you know, on the backs of stories. And we, we know most of the wisdom of the world in the form of stories one way or another. Of course. Peter. Um, yeah, just picking up on this thread, it's really interesting because I, I enjoy stories, I tell stories and um, enjoy listening to stories. Um, and it's interesting when, um, uh, when we all listen to a story, we all, you know, like if it's fairly simple and like it, it's important that the story is not sort of so directive that the, exper the people experience um, something as closed. Again, sort of like referring automatically to the Sabian symbols because of the way, um, the way that they're offered and the way that you've helped with this interpretation. Um, but what's really interesting with stories is that everybody, it's the same story, but everybody has their own individual experience of it, which is sort of like an, an opening out experience um, of it's almost like uh, the inner archive of our personal computer is sort of opened up and shared on another level. It's, it's just such an incredible thing. And that the wisdom of storytelling is not sort of 
um, closing them so much, you know, sort of leaving space for people to use their personal experience and imagination. You know, you don't need to sort of name the tone or the height or the the distances, you know, you can sort of adjust the way that stories are made so that they they actually work, like you say, with the myths, you know. It's, it's really interesting, this thing of being able to, everybody to feel comfortable having their own experience, but we're doing it together. Because if you talk to people afterwards, then they'll all have different points of the story that they've connected with or different things that have happened to them or it's really an incredible incredible uh, technique and it, yeah i mean that's exactly the point with this degree it's not so much the content of the stories at all but it's the fact that there was a group, group of people all mm -hmm. experiencing something or other and that communion um is indifferent to the content it's mm -hmm. the feeling of being together around the campfire and whatever mm -hmm. you're doing, but the stories add grace to it music could do the same thing of course oh all right. Amen. Five. Sorry, and about the, the, the campfire and the fire as well. I think the fact that there's this, well, this, this sense of communion around the campfire or the fire is that we don't really see each other. So it's not, it's, it's really like the, 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 the spirit that counts and not, not the, 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 the way we, we, we look or we appear. So, and that, that's what links us together, the, the, this fact. The, the fire as well. Beautiful. Okay. Libra 5, man teaching true inner knowledge. A teacher's methods allow knowledge to pass by osmosis rather than expression. Seems to be just leading on from what we've been saying, doesn't it? Then the transmission of essence. Controversy has arisen about the spiritual relationship between student and teacher, largely due to abuses of power. However, there is a healthy, helpful process that can occur when the student is encouraged to show reverence, not to the teacher, but to what the teacher reveres and reveals, the truth. Knowledge does not need to be reinvented. It can be rediscovered in full, provided there is an unbroken transmission through the ages. This requires that student and teacher are present together in a heightened state of consciousness. Inner knowledge, that's has a, it's, it's very, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting degree. I guess that for James, that he's also a master and the, the, veil, the, the veiled miss is trying to reveal them. And here you have another type of master, another type of teacher who is teaching some true, Inner knowledge is something that may be something that you can discover in yourself. This what you, I, I, I was telling something that may be something sparked in her. And I don't know, this is this, this idea that is something within us. This, yeah, you know, so of, of this yeah, I think that's a very good point. We, we perhaps skirted over that, but we need to look at that. The, the externalization of the form of knowledge is one thing which is associated with Torah 16, I think is your point. You know, you're mm -hmm. just telling people technique, this is what you need to do to go to that state. But the state itself is the inner knowledge. And that actually passes by this, this mysterious process of atmosphere, not osmosis, catching it rather than being taught. Yeah, that takes us back to the, the butterfly and the chrysalis, say. Eh? Just sort of the essence that's there, that's being passed on, mm. that's transformed. You know, that some um, can't be can't be pinned down. Uh, and also, the second degree is, is all about essence. This the soul qualities. You know, the 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 chrysalis is going to get rid of all the the glob. You know, and, and only leave us with the essence as we transmute. It, it is quite a lot to do with essence. This this batch, isn't it? If we can use this opportunity, James, um, because of Sabine's moon in Libra 6 and to, to a lesser extent Loic's moon in Libra 10, um, to look at the relationship between this expression and the next, because we've said the fifth uh, degree of each batch of five is a stepping stone to the next. Well, the next is reflection. Mm. Um, 
and I think that's a very good point that we we go through this process of learning and you you can t drink in more and more and more and more knowledge and, and you can learn more and more and more and more and more and more but at some point you have to reflect upon that mm. what have you learned and what difference does it, does it make um I, an exercise i go through frequently is um to, to ask myself the question is what i am doing now to progress spiritually working I'm doing all of these exercises, my meditations and prayers and books and teachers. And is it working? And I, I just asked myself, I just go back one year and I imagined how it was a year ago. I try and remember what I was like a year ago and look back on myself at that point. And I, I hope to, um, you know, kind of compassionately ridicule that self because of his ignorance. You know, and I, I can do that typically. I, I look back at what I was like a year ago and I think, oh, God, you know, really How embarrassing. You know? And I'm, <laughs> I'm delighted with that because that, that indicates that I've, I've moved forward, you know. It seems like I can see the correlation or the, 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 the beginning of, of, my, uh, of this moon 10 or at least how it can appear based on those premise or the beginning of it. Um, I always going back to the breath um, for everything. Um, I, I took that breath as an analogy and um, what struck me, struck me um, today was the first thing of the choices, what choices define us and there's the aspect of reinventing ourselves and the aspect of the breath never being the same twice. Um, and being a, a beginning, uh, and yet, an, um, so it is said like breath is another beginning to yet a unique, another expression of life. So I started with that, and then I, re I recognized that my inspiration of the breath um, amplifies um, itself um, in collaboration with the conscious or the universe. So this aspect that goes to the fire and communion around the fire that the breath for me amplifies. Um, and then the breath starts to crystallize itself. Um, and then so that I can transmit the essence of it, which is the inspiration, which is the last one, the, five, the fifth one, when it feels like I can transmit the essence of the breath now that I have been collaborating with conscious, the, the universe um, in the degree before. So um, coming, coming to my degree, which is a little bit further, so I would need to know how, how it um, applies itself in degree six, seven, and eight, and nine. Um, <laughs> but I, I can see something there connected to the breath and my inspiration. So. The idea that the fourth, Degree is the one who holds kind of the secret to unleash the, the, the power of the badge. Is I, I heard that a, a couple of meetings ago. So in this sense, the 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 the, the secret has to do with this com communal aspect of gathering together in order to build the communion and build the spirit in order to get the essence of the badge. I think there's a lot in that. Yeah, I, I you know we're talking about learning. And we're coming to the understanding that how we learn is to form communion rather than to follow a teacher, e even though teachers are there um, at the end. Uh, nevertheless, the ability we've got to assimilate the teaching has been created, as Loic has just said, in that group experience in the fourth, you know, fourth place. And that often goes hand in hand. We, we, we might visit a teacher, but actually we engage with a group when we do that. Very often, hand in hand, those two experiences, aren't they? Almost universal. So what I perhaps have mentioned before is if I was like assessing whether a teacher would work for me, I would look around the teacher at the student group that the teacher attracted. And, and if that was my group of people, then it made sense to me to join them. But if it wasn't, then I don't care what the teacher's like. It's not 
not likely that I'm going to pick up what he's, you know, what he wants to teach. So that communion was more important to me than the individual teacher. Thank you.